And welcome back, my math party people. Anderson here, your math coach. And in this video, we're following up from the previous one in terms of law of exponents. So in the previous video, we went over how to multiply these powers. And now we're going to go over how to divide powers. So remember, if you're in the course of the program, up next, what you're going to see is a worksheet that you can print out or keep online with 100 problems that you can go ahead and practice, practice, practice with. And then after that, you have the speed drills that you can get into because those speed drills are going to help you practice for speed. And on top of that, basically show that you've mastered the topic. So again, if you're in the course or program, get ready to go into those worksheets and speed drills right after this. But here we go. How do you go ahead and divide powers? So in the previous video, we went over the idea of multiplying powers. And what we did was we added those exponents. So what I want you to think about is this. When you're thinking about dividing powers, really what you're doing is you're simplifying. You're canceling out essentially. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rule here and show you how it works right over here. So here's what you notice. Notice that we have 9x to the power of 4 divided by 9x to the power of 3. Now, what's the most obvious thing that you can see that can cancel out, quote unquote? When you take a look here, you might notice that the 9 right there, up top and bottom, that can cancel out. That can absolutely cancel out. Because remember, when you have the same thing on top and bottom being divided, it cancels out. Right? Right. Now, how does that work with variables? Well, here's the same, it's the same idea, my math party people, same idea. Remember, when you're looking at x to the power of 4, what that means is, hey, I have four x's being multiplied back to back. So that would show that we have x times x times x times x. And then over here, what we have are three x's for x to the power of three. So that would mean that we have x times x times x. Let's be real, my ASVAB party people. You're enjoying this YouTube video, but why don't you join me for a free class? I host a free class once a week for two hours. So imagine, two hours of free ASVAB math instruction by yours truly, where you get to ask questions, grow with me, raise your score, and get the job you want. So go ahead, click the link here or in the description to sign up for free. And from there, I'll see you in the next class. But until then, let's get back to the math party. So what happens here, everybody? What happens? Well, what happens is you notice that you can cancel out this x and that x, this x and this x, and this x and that one there, leaving you with just one of those x's right there. And so that would equal x over 1 or just x after you just ignore the 1. But what just happened? What's a shortcut that we can use? Well, here's the shortcut that you can use, my math partner people. The rule for dividing powers that have the same base. Again, they have to have the same base. These are both x's on the bottom. When you are dividing powers with the same base, you will subtract the exponents. Subtract and then keep the power where there were more. Because remember, if you have four up top and three on bottom, you see the cancellation happening, but you're going to be left over on top because the four is greater than the three. Just like that. And so the rule would be this. If we're looking at, again, the x to the power of 4 over x to the power of 3, that simply becomes x to the power of 4 minus 3, which is x to the power of 1. And x to the power of 1 is just x. That's just x up top because, again, when you cancel out, you're left with the power up top. You have 4 up top, 3 on bottom. You're going to have the leftover on top. And so the main question is going to be this. Okay, so our correct answer is D. But what if you have you know, more pieces on the bottom, right? What if you have the bigger exponent in the denominator? That's exactly what I'm here to show you. So let's go ahead and get into the second one, number two. So like we did in the previous video, what I showed you was, hey, look, go ahead and deal with one piece at a time. If you have a numerator and denominator here, hey, see if you can simplify the regular numbers. Then go into the variables alphabetically. So stay tuned, my party people, because we're going to go through plenty of examples and they're going to get increasingly more difficult than this. So stay tuned all the way through the end. That way I can show you these basics, fundamentals, all the way through some more complicated problems. So when you look at 9 over 10, can you simplify 9 and 10? And what I mean by that is, do they have any common factors that we can divide out or cancel out? No. 9 and 10, no, they don't have anything in common. So with that, we would just leave it as 9 over 10. We would just leave it as 9 on top and 10 on bottom. 
Now, what happens with those M's? Well, here's what happens, my party people. Let me show you what the answer is going to be. The answer is going to be, it's going to be 9 over 10 M to the power 4. That's what the answer is going to be. So here's the short version, and I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you the long way. The short version is this. You're going to take the same bases. Okay, cool. You have 2 there, and you have 6 there. What's the difference between 2 and 6? It's going to be 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. Now, where was the bigger exponent? On the bottom. So those leftovers are going to be on the bottom. Now, let me show you the visual way. The visual way is going to look like this. m squared is going to be x, excuse me, m times m. m to the power of 6 is going to be m times m times m times m times m times m. Right? You're going to have six of those m's being multiplied back to back. That's really what an exponent means. An exponent just tells you how many times it's being multiplied. And now take a look here. What do you notice? Notice that this m and that m will cancel out because you have the same thing on top and on bottom. And then on top of that, well, guess what? You're also going to cancel out that m and that m. And what do you have left? Right here. You have one, two, three, four m's left on bottom being multiplied together, which means you have m to the power of four. So hopefully this idea is pretty straightforward because again, all you're doing is you're canceling out and you do want a positive exponent. You do want one because it's common practice when you're dealing with writing expressions to not have any negative exponents in the denominator or any negatives at all in the denominator typically. And so with that, there's our final answer and that would be answer choice B. But again, we're going to get into more and more increasingly difficult problems. So allow me to go ahead and look at, let's say, number three. This one's a pretty curious one, but it's also very straightforward. Let's take care of business here. So, first of all, what we want to take care of, again, are those regular old numbers. 2 and 10. When you have 2 up top and 10 on bottom, what can you divide 2 and 10 by? How can you simplify that fraction? Well, guess what? 2 and 10 are both divisible by 2. And so, therefore, what you're going to see is right here. You can divide the 2 by 2 and the 10 by 2, and there you go. You get 1 over 5. Because remember, what you're doing is you're simplifying by doing the same thing to the top and the bottom. And so with that, let's write this out. What we'll have so far is you'll have 1 over 5. And then with the variables, let's go ahead and take care of business there. We have n to the power of 6 and n to the power of 0. Now, if you were paying attention in the previous video, I did mention this, and I'll mention it again. Anything to the power of zero is one. And if you want to take a look here, look, you have six n's and no n's at all. So there's nothing really to cancel out. We can just get rid of that n to the power of zero because again, anything to the power of zero equals one. Anything to the power of zero equals one, anything. And so we're just left with n to the power of six up top, which would be the same thing as saying, well, one times anything is gonna be itself. So that would just be n to the power of six over 5. And that's what we get, answer choice B. Again, we're going to get into some more difficult problems coming up very, very shortly. Let's take care of business over here. Let's go ahead and take care of number 7. So number 7, we have 5a squared over a to the power of 7. How do we take care of this? Well, again, notice how we have a 5 up top, but nothing on bottom, so the 5 is going to stay exactly where it is. The 5 will stay exactly where it is. Next up, we're going to be taking care of a squared and a to the power of 7. Before we continue, just want to take a quick moment to thank you for watching this video. And all I ask is that you please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That way more people just like you can see these videos. But on top of that, if you're looking for more ways to practice the right way and raise your score with guidance without stressing, then I really wholly 100% recommend my ASVAB All Access program. The program, long story short, helps you watch, practice, and master every topic from the word knowledge to paragraph comprehension, arithmetic reasoning, math knowledge, general science. It's there and it's designed to help you succeed with practicing the right way. So with that said, check out the link in the description to see how it all works because you're going to have ways to learn in every way that you prefer. And you get my guidance and my support all the way until you pass. So don't hesitate. Stop feeling nervous and being anxious and letting yourself feel that way. 
when there's a solution waiting right here for you. Check out the link in the description, that way you see how it works, and then reach out to me if you have any questions about it. Let's get back to raising our scores. So remember, what you're doing is essentially taking the difference of those exponents, and then leave the power where there were more, because that's where the leftovers are gonna be. So if you have seven up top, or seven on bottom and two up top, two of those are gonna cancel on the top and the bottom. That's why you subtract. You're canceling out, you're taking it away. Seven minus two is gonna be five, and you're gonna have five left on the bottom, a to the power of five on bottom. So it'll be right here, c, five over a to the power of five. And if you wanted to see it, remember that a squared is a times a, a to the power of seven is seven of those being multiplied together. And we see that we'll cancel out one, two, one, two, leaving us with five left over. And that's where that power of five comes through because there's five left on the bottom. So let's go ahead and keep taking care of business here, my math party people. Let's go ahead and try out some more difficult problems. Let's go ahead and take a look at, let's say beyond number 50 here. This is where you'll see the more difficult ones. So right over here, let me go and find one that includes two sets of variables. So let's go ahead and try this one out. 56 here, I like this one. So 56, right over here, we have 5x squared y to the power of 9 over 4xy to the power of 5. Let's go ahead and get it here. So what's going to happen first? Let's go ahead and take care of those regular numbers. Nice and easy. So over here, let's highlight. I see that we have 5 and we have 4. Do 5 and 4 share anything in common? Nope, you can't cancel anything out there. That's totally fine. And so what we'll end up with is simply 5 up top and 4 on bottom. Then we're gonna take care of the x's. So over here what we have is x squared up top and x in the denominator. Remember what we're doing is we're canceling out. The idea is subtract those exponents and keep it where the bigger one was. So if we have x squared up top, what's the exponent on just x? One, remember it is just a one right here. That is an exponent of one. It does not share that five. It does not share the five from the y y is to the power of five not x be very careful there so here we have one up on bottom two up top so we take we you know we cancel out one of those x's leaving us with just x to the power of one or just x up top because two minus one is one and there you go now lastly let's take care of the y to the power of nine over y to the power of five we're canceling out we're subtracting the exponents because we have nine up top five of them on bottom so when you divide, you're canceling out five on top and bottom. And so nine minus five, what we'll have is y to the power of four up top. Making the final answer, five x times y to the power of four, all over four. And that is answer choice C. Let's keep it going here. Let's try another practice problem out. Again, this is all about getting the right amount of practice and understanding what is going on here. Let's take care of lit number 58. Notice that again, we have two variables now, x and y, but the idea doesn't change. Remember that you're only going to be applying the rule to the things that have the same base, to the pieces that have the same base. And so what that means is, well, hey, x squared and x to the power of nine, those will interact. This y squared on bottom, it's gonna stay on bottom. There's nothing else to, you know, really stopping us or telling us to do anything. So that's it, that's it. So with that, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if first we look at the seven and the 10, do they have anything in common? Absolutely not. Seven and 10 don't share any common factors. So we'll leave the seven on the top and the 10 on the bottom. Up next, what do we do? So up next, we see that we have x squared and x to the power of nine. So we have two on the top, nine on the bottom. What's gonna happen? Well, what we'll do is remember, we have two of these x's up top, and then nine of them on the bottom. So I'm not even gonna write it down. We're gonna have nine on the bottom, but what's gonna happen is these two up top are gonna to cancel with two of those on the bottom. And so you're basically, again, subtracting. Nine minus two is seven, but be very careful because you're gonna have seven on the bottom. Seven on the bottom because again, if you have two up top and nine of them on the bottom, well, guess what? Two up top and two on bottom get canceled out, and then you have seven left over on the bottom. And so there it is. And lastly, we just leave the y squared as is. 
And there's our final answer. It's going to be 7 over 10x to the power of 7 y squared. And that will be answer choice D. Right there. Nice and easy. But let's keep it going here. There, there are some more difficult problems that we do definitely want to check out. And as a reminder, you're in the course of the program. If you are, make sure that after this you go up next to the worksheet. And then from there, those speed drills so you can really, really, really be sure and certain that you have this down. Let's go ahead and get into it here. We're going to get into number... Let's go ahead and take a look at something a little harder. Let's go ahead and take a look at... Let's say 68. And then we're going to go into the next set where we may have even more to do, okay? So here, number 68, what do we have going on? Well, I don't have any regular numbers up top. It's just a 1 there and a 10 on bottom. So when we take care of business here, we're going to end up having just a 10 in the denominator. And then from there, what do we do? Well, we'll take care of these x's first. We have x to the power of 4 on top, x to the power of 7 in the denominator. So what's going to happen? Well, again... What you do is you subtract. So you're going to have 7 minus 4, which is going to be 3. That's going to be your new exponent. But where is it going to be again? On the top or the bottom? It's going to be on the bottom. It's going to be on the bottom because, again, we have more x's on the bottom than up top. So after you're done canceling, the leftover will stay on bottom. So we have x to the power of 3 once we subtract 7 minus 4. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and take care of the y to the power of 10 divided by y to the power of 8. Again, the rule is subtract. And so we see that we have 10 up top, 8 on bottom. But where will the leftover remain? In the numerator. Because you have 10 here and only 8 here. So 8 cancels here, 8 cancels there, leaving you with 2 more on the top. And there it is. There's our final answer. y squared over 10x to the power of 3. Right there. There's the answer. So now let's get into some more difficult ones here. Let's get into some more annoying problems. Let's check out number, let's say, 77, where we have more variables here. Number 77, let's check this one out. So just like the prior problem, we see that we have a regular number up top and on bottom. And so we leave that the same because 10 and 7 don't share any common factors. So we'll go ahead and leave that as is. 10 up top, 7 on bottom. Then from there, my math part of people, notice that we are going to take care of m, p, and q. So starting off with m, we see that we have m to the power of 5 on top, m to the power of 10 in the denominator. So what we do is we subtract. What's 10 minus 5? That's going to be 5. But where do we put that m to the power of 5? On the bottom, because we have a greater exponent on the bottom than the top. So that means your leftovers will be on the bottom. And there we have that. m to the power of 5 right there. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. Then. What's next? Well, what we see is we have p to the power of 10 up top. I'm going to use a different color here. p to the power of 10 up top. But we don't see any p's in the denominator. So we just leave that p to the power of 10 right there up top. Just leave it where it was. Then after that, we have q to the power of 10 over q to the power of 3. So with that said, again, just to remind you and show you, we're going to have 10 of these q's. 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, and 10. Notice how annoying that was to kind of fill out. So we have 10 of those on top. And then we have 3 of them in the denominator. So what does that mean, my math part of people? It means that 1 cancels, 2 cancel. Let me actually use the same thinness here. So I'll use a different color. So 2 cancel right there. And then the third set cancels right here. And so how many do you have left? Well, you have this many left. We have this many left. And that is going to be seven once you count it out. And so boom, you have yourself seven left over of those Q's. So Q to the power of seven. That's why it works. Again, because you're canceling out and you're leaving the amount of the remainder 
wherever there were more because that's naturally, intuitively, that's how it works. And so there you go. Booyah, our final answer is 10p to the power of 10, q to the power of seven, all over 7m to the power of five, and we are good. That is answer choice C, and we are good. Now, let's go ahead and check out another hard one here, and then we are gonna call it a day. So let's take a look something at, let's say, let's go ahead and check out something that we can simplify. Definitely wanna try something there. Let's go ahead and take care of, do, 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 do. Let's see, what's one that I really do wanna try out that looks like it's worth our time? <laughs> number 99, I like number 99. Let's go ahead and check out number 99. So, number 99 here, and this is the last one we'll do and we'll call it again, move on to those worksheets, move on to those speed drills and really keep kicking butt. But number 99 here, notice that we have a lot going on, right? A number and three variables. But don't worry, take it nice and slow. We have eight and six, first of all, to deal with. So when I take a look at that, well, hey, what do eight and six have in common? Well, I can divide them both by two. Eight and six are both divisible by two. So if I divide the top and the bottom by two, what I'll get is it's gonna be four over three. Again, simplifying fractions, right? The same idea applies to exponents. Same idea, we're just simplifying, we're canceling out. And so what do we have first with the x's? x to the power of six and x squared. Well, we have a six up top, two on bottom, subtract, you get four, and you're gonna keep that x to the power of four up top. Because again, you have more up top than on bottom, so the remainder stays up top. Next, we have ourselves y to the power of 10, y to the power of seven. So what we have here is going to be, hey, 10 minus seven is three, and you have more up top, so you'll have y to the power of three up top. Lastly, we take care of z to the power of eight over z to the power of five. Same deal, my party people. We see that we have ourselves eight up top and five on bottom, so the remainder stays up top. Eight minus five is three, and there we go. Z to the power of three. And there is our final answer. Four x to the power of four, y to the power of three, z to the power of three, all over three. And that makes our final answer choice B. And so there it is, my math party people. There it is. I really do hope you enjoyed this because at the end of the day, what I want you to do is understand the product power of exponents, which we went over in the previous video, the division, the quotient law of exponents, which we're doing right now. Then from there, we're going to go into negative exponents, powers of powers, making sure that we have all of this down. Then you're going to, again, have that speed drill that you can work through for each and every single one of these. That way, from there, you're going to get into mixed practice. At the end of this, you'll see mixed practice. And this is where everything is gonna get super, super, super interesting because we're mixing all of these ideas together. If you can do those problems, you'll be golden. And so with that set my math party people, let's go ahead, let's keep moving, let's keep raising that score, and let's go ahead and succeed at the end of the day. I'm Coach Anderson, you know how to reach me, and I'll see you in the next video. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.